Good morning. Good morning. Good to see each and every one of you that are here this morning. You that are watching, we miss you. And uh, we're praying for God's uh, power upon you. And uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer on our prayer list. It's growing, but God is still in control. Amen. Yeah. Let's remember Sister Cheryl. Sister Fran's not able to be with us. Continue praying for her. Sister Myra. Sister Kathy's knees, her son, son Jeremy, her husband Chet, her cousin Paul, uh, Sister Colleen, not feeling good this morning. Uh, her uh, allergies is that time of year. Yeah. We've really got her uh, down. We continue praying for her daughter Elizabeth. Uh, we continue praying for Sandy. She's a friend of Mother Steve. She's doing okay, better. She's at home. So let's continue praying for that. Good to see Sister Kathy pull in just now. Uh, continue praying for Sister Linda's children, their children, and uh, their marriage. God knows all about this. Her brother Ronnie, uh, Sister Sandy's knees. Good to see her walking about the cage this morning. Amen. Amen. And, and, uh, so we're just going to pray for that. And uh, uh, Sister, uh, go back to Sister Linda. We prayed for her here Thursday night, and uh, God touched her. Amen. Yeah. Because she uh, let Sister Angela know that uh, everything feels she feels great. So let's continue praying for that, though. Anyhow, Sister Sandy's knees, her husband Charles, and their children, and grandson Ethan, and uh, their friend Phoebe, and uh, son-in-law Steve. He came through the surgery real good. Uh, continue praying for Sister Garden that God will move upon that situation there. It's a sad situation, but I won't get into it. Brother Bob's co-worker's brother, continue praying for that. And Brother Bob wants to uh, share with uh, another one. Go ahead, Brother Bob. Yeah, and you know, you know, the story of that last one, you know, they came to me knowing I was praying man while well, I was approached here a few weeks ago when I mentioned this guy to the pastor. I went down to the tool crib, which is the other end of the plant, and the guy goes, you got to imagine you coming back because it's all been sitting in that. Sure, I went back here, and he goes, the Lord already told me you're a praying man. I was like, thank you, Lord, you know. We're yes. getting out. Yes. And he asked me, you know, what you told me? He says, you know, I'm Christian, but I'm not perfect. I said, there's not one person, not one. But he asked me, his son has is a disease called bony and bony heart disease, which shuts down the organs and the immune system in the body, and the boy is paralyzed, and he's been in the hospital, you see. He will make a full recovery, but he asked me if we could put him on a prayer list. You know, when he was praying, and we prayed with this other man, I said, sure thing, he asked me to pray with him. So God opened the doors knowing, you know, we're not allowed to do this in the open, but God's getting word out there yes. where we can get, you know, people, pray for these people and, and that, but just remember him, you know, he, he's got two about now. He, not fully able to talk, but they say he'll it'll be a long recovery. But I believe God can make it quicker, just like He did with my other co workers. So yes. just remember Him and His name, Jake. Jake, Jake, Jake Rich. All right, All right. Then, you know, folks, you know, if uh, you hide your uh, uh, candle under the bushel, nobody's going to see it. Amen. Amen. He said, "You be ashamed of nothing. You be ashamed of me. I'll be ashamed of you." So people are watching us. We may be the only Bible they ever read. So, you know, let's pray for this, this young man. Yeah. Continue praying for Brother Tim's uh, sister. And there's a family situation there going on for their salvation. We're going to believe God for that. Yeah. Brother Bob's uh, going down to the VA Tuesday, I believe it is, to get a shot. Or is that, or, or Lima, right? Lima. And uh, Corson's shot, so let's continue praying for him. He's got a cousin, Paul, that uh, fell off a ladder. And... Uh, uh, just by the grace of God, he's alive today. And uh, he fell, and when he fell in the garage, uh, he was climbing up the ladder, and all of a sudden the, the door started coming down. Where'd it go up? It started going up and kicked him off the ladder in a barn, and he fell right on a, tr uh, a plow. And, uh, you know, he, he's a little bruised up, but uh, thank God that he's still there. And continue praying for uh, their daughter, Vicki, the situation there. Uh, continue praying for our granddaughter Peyton. She's going to be having surgery. And our next door neighbor Patty, I seen her out walking around yesterday. So 
Uh, we're just going to continue praying for her. Sister Angela's allergies. Pastor Kathy down to uh, uh, Mary. A Dawson, tumor on the heart. Little old more, God's will be done. Two teachers in uh, one in Lima is doing good. One in Philly needs prayer. And uh, a little boy, a young boy with cancer, Miss Lori, Evie, Marty, Alex, Kayla, Israel, and, and Jerusalem. Our nation, our, our church, public schools. <coughs> uh, Brother Todd's wife, Elizabeth, down in Texas, she fell and uh, sprained her ankle and uh, her hip or knee. Knee. Knee, so uh, uh, dislocated. So let's pray for her. And the God will move and get, get a quick healing upon her. And uh, uh, Sister uh, Shannon shared with me that with us this morning, there was a little boy that was just a uh, newborn, uh, Hudson, and he's having open heart surgery today. So we're going to leave for God to guide the doctors, whatever's going on. And there's a young, there's a man out to the heart and heels, David, that needs a touch from the Lord. And uh, I, I say this one for the last. We need to pray for President Trump. Yeah. Amen. What happened last night was not called for. Amen. It was just an attack of the devil. And uh, so, uh, I don't know if Sister Sandy's a little bit for him. I know Sister Kathy is. I posted something more than last night, and then I got news this morning. They kicked it off. They took it off. Yeah. And what I said was, after I go back over there, I said, I got one more comment. You can either believe me or not. That's between you and God. Yeah. I said, I believe that God had his hand upon President Trump. Amen. Amen. And this is the scripture that I put on there. Genesis 50, 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. They didn't like it. And they kicked me off. That's all right. Hey. Amen. There you know is who's quite. Over it? Huh? Do you know who's over it? No, I don't. I'll find out. Nope. And uh, they they said a thing said that uh, you know we need to be careful. I was careful. Yeah. I just told it like it is. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> people don't want to hear the word of God. So you know, and I even posted a big post on there, and I put it on Facebook, and I put it on ours. About, you know, no matter if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, this was uncalled for. But we need to pray for President Trump. Yeah. What we saw yesterday was an angelical power of God. Yeah. Amen. We we'll direct that. Sadly, there's some lives taken. Yeah. But you know what? God has a plan for President Trump. Yeah. And I thank God that he gave God the honor. Yeah. You know, he... Yeah. <clears throat> He thanked God for watching over him. And uh, so we need to pray for him, pray for the families of the lost loved ones. And then and even the one that was killed that shot uh, uh, President at, at him. So, you know, and let's pray for all of our unsaved children. And, uh, you know, that God will move. Anybody else have a spoken request? Uh, I just got a text from Pastor Ann uh, Turner. I think she lives in Bustoria. She's Joe Turner's, uh, would be sister-in-law. Uh, her mother was in the hospital. They took her in yesterday. Uh, she had been on drugs. And uh, she's asking the church for prayer for her mom. This is, uh, who's? Uh, Pastor Ann Turner from Pastoria. She has a to church up there. Any relation to Joe Turner? Yeah, that's her brother-in-law. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, well, I'll let you be praying for this uh, uh, lady. Anybody else? Uh, good evening, Pastor Kathy. Uh, I'm Sister Kathy. Uh, Alrighty, let's continue praying for Sister Sharon. Anybody else? Uh, spoken request by lifting up your hand. Uh, remember Sister Alfie, Brother Dale, especially Brother Dale. I don't know what's going on. I tried to get hold of him this week. Something going on with his stomach. So I don't know if that's the reason why they're unable to be here this morning. I will try to find out today. But continue praying for Brother Dale. That God will touch and heal his body. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, Brother.
Father, will you join me this morning? Let's just lift our hands up to the Lord. And let's bleed together. That God will touch each and every one of these requests that's been spoken this day. Heavenly Father, we come one more time in the name of Jesus. We ask you, dear God, that you heal, touch each and every one that's been spoken, we read this morning, that you heal them completely, make them whole, and if there's any sin, dear Lord, that you'll forgive them of their sin, and heal our land, dear God, as we need it today. We thank you, dear Lord, for protecting President Trump, Lord, and we are sad about the situation of life been taken, dear Lord. And we're believing, dear God, that you have a plan for this man. Yes, Lord, and our country needs you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask this today, dear God, that you move and touch. Lord, save those that are lost. Yes, Lord. You heard the spoken needs this morning, dear Lord. And we bring them before you. And God, we ask you, those that may be still making their way, that you watch over and protect us. And Lord, we enter into your presence this morning. We give you all praise and give you all glory. We love you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. And amen. Let's give the Lord another good hand. God bless you. I put on there last night. 2 Chronicles 7 14. You know, I believe, and I, I told uh, on the forum and on our Facebooks, we need prayer back in the schools. And we need prayer back in our homes. And then what do you happen if we put prayer back in our homes? Come on. And then and trust in God. But then you know what God has got a plan? The devil's not going to stop it. He's going to try. Now, I thought this morning that they're picking out songs. You know, I know President Trump won't be watching, but if you're watching, we love you. And I want to dedicate this song to him this morning. It's called I Shall Not Be Moved. Amen. Amen. No matter what the devil throws at me, that man is strong, and I believe that this morning. Come on, let's sing this morning. Will Jesus be my Savior?
wonder what well, you are our Savior. We thank you give you the knowledge that you watched over President Trump. And the Lord has received this moment. Say, fight, fight, fight. Your Lord, you will be here. We are going to fight for this nation. The Lord, that we trust in you, your heart, and you got a prayer. And the Lord, that this man shall not be moved. And he shall not be moved in your order. And the Lord, we just thank you this morning, your heart, for your leading and your kindness and your watching over and protecting your heart. Each and every one of us, your Lord. You are awesome this morning. And we come to worship you, we come to praise you, your Lord. And we thank you this morning, your heart. We thank you this morning that you can move out to us. We thank you, Lord, know, that you keep me alive and you hide me from the rain. And that you are awesome. Oh, Lord, let's worship at this morning's church. If you are here watching this morning, worship him. Just worship the Lord, he's awesome.
Bring me a verse one that I'm going to love. This is a song that says, My God is awesome. You can do it out.
So if you want to bring a dish, you're very welcome to put something in it. Food. That's edible. <laughs> so uh, we were going to do uh, fried chicken, but we were going to do, do something else because it was going to be too hard to have that many mouths to feed for fried chicken. So we'll probably just go with uh, hamburger and hot dog, something simple, and just fellowship and have a good time together. So that's Saturday, this coming Saturday at uh, 2 o'clock. The next Sunday, a week from today, after the morning service, we're going to have our uh, dinner, but it's going to be a, a celebration for little uh, Maura. She's going to be two years old, and uh, so we're having a birthday party downstairs for her, and uh, we're going to have pizza and uh, other stuff, so stick around and, and help us celebrate her second birthday, and uh, we just thank the Lord for that. And uh, she goes to court next week. Yeah, pray because we get, she goes to court next week, and and there's some things that uh, they're disagreeing on, and we're just praying that uh, God has His way. Yes. Amen. Yes. God has His way. So uh, you know, it's it's sad, and uh, I had to say some things when we dropped her on Thursday to the dad. You know that uh, happened why last weekend when we got her back. It's sad. It's sad. And uh, so we just uh, go to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And uh, so we're going to believe that. Amen. You ready to sing? All right. Because I got a message this morning. And it's going to be about an hour and a half. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Come on, sister. Praise the Lord. You know, sister Angela sings a song. Speak the name of Jesus. Yes. And I do that every for everybody. And I tell the Lord, you know, I speak the name of Jesus over our family. Yes. And like the children of Israel, we're all taken out of Egypt. I was believing not only for us, but for the whole church and their families, that not one will be left behind. Exactly. God can do anything. So That's I'm true. going to tell him to go after them, you know, our kids. And I'm just thinking also that no weapon formed against us shall right. prosper. And I speak that over President Trump. I speak the name of Jesus. Because God is good. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, look at what the Lord can do with something that's dead. He 
can take an old cold piece of clay, give it life and breath. Oh, yeah, what the Lord can do with something that's dead. He can take an old cold piece of clay, give it life and breath. Just like you did that. Yes, you did. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's receive your tithes and offerings, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Some of you have already put yours in this morning, but we thank you. Amen. Thank you for those that send it to Cash App, send it to, by mail, or, you know, however. We just thank you for that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for what you've done. And God, we need the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us. We need that. We need that rain, dear God, to fall. We need the rain. We need the rain. We need the rain. We need the latter rain. And God, move them all. Bless this offering this morning, and we just give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. And amen. If you got anything, drop it off. The Lord will bless you. Amen. We'll sit down and read on. Sit down and read on. Sit down and read on. Sit
so much today than we ever had before. God, we ask you to move the Holy Spirit on this week. Learn of your word and teach of your word this morning. And we give you praise, we give you glory, and everybody say amen. 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 I want to talk to you about the refining fire. The refining fire. The church needs the dwelling power of the Holy Ghost to be a refining fire and to prepare us for the great deception of the end of times. Yes. We cannot survive as faithful Christians in hours to come without the fire of the Holy Ghost in our midst. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is so important that Jesus, to even told his disciples, who were obviously believers who were born again to wait in the upper room until the Holy Ghost would come to bring the fire and the power of God. Yeah. Jesus knew that as we face the powers of hell in this life that we're facing today, we would need the ever present, indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. And the church must be empowered yeah. and then anointed and full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Well, a lot of Christians are satisfied. <laughs> but before we do it, the first works of repentance and initial salvation, yes, and do not seek the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. The time is upon us today that there is a great spirit of deception that has been released in the earth and has invaded the church. And without the baptism, the fire, the anointing, the gifts of the spirit, and operation, many are being deceived. We need the gift of discerning of spirits these days. Amen. Come on, church. I've watched as many of the denominations that have rejected the baptism in the Holy Ghost and have kicked him out of their churches have fallen into the trap of deception yeah. laid by the devil. Not only the leadership, but the people in the pews no longer adhere to the Word of God. But they adhere to traditions of men and doctrines of devils. Yeah, in some so-called churches, they may even allow demons on, who have the supernatural ability to change their appearances to appear as very persuasive, very charismatic. Men and women who claim to be pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, and teachers Teachers uh, who stand in their pulpits today. These demonic individuals, and I call them demonic, yeah. have been empowered by Satan oh, with the power to deceive many as they teach what they may sound good and pleasant to the ear, oh, providing some new thing. That tickles the mind, but it doesn't line up with what the saying the Word of God says. The power of deception allows them to change, allows them to uh, uh, distort the Scriptures to support their false, ungodly doctrines. To even deny the virgin birth of Jesus. And it calls many and the church to stop believing in Jesus as the way of salvation. Come on, church. We are living in a terrible time today. Yeah. By appealing to unrighteous heart of men, they have cast out the presence of the Holy Ghost and created apostate churches. The church has seen a great falling away in the past few years, fulfilling, fulfilling the word of God in Second Thessalonians, where Paul said, let no man, as we read, deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, 
And that man has said to be revealed the son of perdition. We are seeing that today. Yeah. The church ought to be full. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't matter about the pastor. As long as us save the Lord is being preached behind the pulpit, the church ought to be full. Yeah. But we have seen it. Amen. A great falling away. Many churches have closed permanently. Yeah. Many Christians were once grateful to attend church. Have left and refused to come back because of either wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And they can't agree with the word of God that is based upon the truth. But would rather believe the lies of deception. As I said last week, I believe it was, I'll say it again today. I can't understand people driving down the road in the car by themselves with a mask on. <laughs> Stupid. Are you going to try to catch your own uh, sickness? Yeah. Some will never come back to church because they have been deceived into believing that watching church on TV or on the internet is good enough. They forget the word of God that says we are not to forget to assemble ourselves together. And even more as the, as the end approaches. We are not, we, I don't know about you, we all need one another. Yeah. Come, on, Come on. When you're not here, I miss you. When you're not here, God misses you. Hello? We need one another. We need to experience stuff. Power of the Holy Ghost in our midst. <laughs> the great deception, church, is here. It is only going to get far more deception than it is right now. They can say, oh no, it's, it's, it's okay. No, it's not. The world was deceived as COVID-19 was released as a man-made virus with the capability of not only killing millions of people, but more importantly, hit within the deception was a spiritual attack. And that attack is still going on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, Governor Huckleberry said it well last night. He said, it's not that the, the Democrats are in the world that's going on. There's a spirit, and we're fighting against the spirit of deception. We're fighting against the spirit of wickedness. That's what we're fighting against. Not one another, but the devil, come on, has loosened all of his demon spirits upon this land. He's going to the going to and fro, trying to kill and destroy. Yeah. But we need the power. It's a, a spiritual attack upon the nations and upon the church as Satan attempted to silence the voice of preachers and prophets and, and plunge many into a faith-destroying fear. Yeah. That's what the world wants to put. Put a fear upon us. I believe President Trump text fear not. Or something like that. He talked about fear. I tell you what, if it had been somebody else, they'd been carrying him probably on a stretcher out. Not because he's dead, because they're not a fighter like he is. Amen. Oh, I know. I'm going to get flat for this. <clears throat> Our junk 38 at yahoo.com. That's my email. Our junk, because what you send me. It's nothing but junk. We are living in a day. Men have no respect for one another. Around the world, churches closed for a time. Remember, a few years ago, they closed for a time out of respect and the love of our fellow man. Trying to be reasonable and to wait for a time of healing rather than to be a place of spreading even more pain and suffering. Since this was a 
an untraveled road for most pastors and Christians everywhere, we all had to seek the Lord to know what to do. Yeah. And most of us chose to listen and help stop the spread. But there came a time yeah. early on when those who love God and love His Word begin to hear the Word say, don't succumb to the fear. Be obedient servants and I will be with you. Open your eyes and see the battle that is raging in the Spirit. Yeah. And engage in the battle through what? The Word of God. Yes. It is time that God's, come on, army come on. starts marching through the land, preaching and teaching the truth. Yeah. Praying for it, expecting revival. We are not called to sit behind closed doors forever. That's right. We are called to step out and live by faith. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. In Matthew 24, 24, Jesus spoke these words concerning these last days. And the time of the tribulation under the Antichrist's rule. He said, for there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and they shall show good sign, great sign, and wonders. And so Matt said, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Yes, they are showing that today, church. Yes, sir. Come on. I often wonder, how can the very elect be deceived? How can we not see discern or understand something that is easily seen as fulfillment of Jesus' warnings and still be deceived into believing the lies. Huh? These past few years, I don't know about you, have shown me just how easy it can happen. Even to those who love Jesus. Know His Word and have the Holy Ghost. Just think of how easy the church was brought into the trap alone with the rest of the world and then realize that it was only the persecute, a preserved cursor to what's really coming. The time will come, and it is at our door when there will be even greater threats, greater and more dangerous times, and fear will be even more rampant than it is now. Come on. It can, it can be seen to be the right thing to do and it will be so easy to just give it in, in for a while. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, the truth will be revealed. Yeah. Amen. And when you know the truth, that truth will set you free from the power of deception. Yeah. We are going to have to be full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And in close touch with the heart of God through prayer, worship, and faithfulness. Amen. Knowing His voice Amen. and hearing no other Amen. without the enabling power of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God on the inside burning away those lies and reveal the truth, we will be among the very elect who was deceived. Yeah. That's why we need, come on church, we need the refining fire of the Holy Ghost inside of us. Yeah. The church is Satan's number one target. Because the church is the only power on earth that has the potential to stop his plans for conquest. But the church is nothing without the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We must have that purifying, refined fire of the Spirit in us all of the time. The presence of the Holy Ghost gives the anointing that breaks the yoke only when we will have the power to let or not let the devil have his way. Amen. This present situation that you and I are living in today, where all the freedoms of men are under attack. Amen? Amen. And the ability to preach the gospel, come on, under sage 
and even being taken away with preachers being jailed and those who are fighting for freedom from oppressive liberal governments are jailed. It's very close. It's almost like Hitler's Germany. Come on. And Stalin's rise to power and the rise of the Chinese communists. What comes next can be seen in the Holocaust of the murder of 6 million Jews, the death of 60 million under Joseph Stalin, and the mass murder of 80 million who opposed communism take over in China. You don't think it could come to the U.S.? Oh. It's at our door. That's right. Come on. That's right. And the worst is yet to come. Truth. Countless Christians will suffer yeah. and die during the time of genocide of all who oppose the Antichrist. How many millions can that be? Certainly it will mean all the Jews and Christians who come to Christ after the rapture of the church. And the Bible says that unless those days should be shortened, that no flesh would be saved. I never thought I would live to see the day when America would be so close to joining the ranks of total men totalitarian, socialist, and communist governments. Yeah. But here it is, right at our door. Truth. Right at our doorstep, America is being prepared right along with the rest of the world for the rise of the Antichrist. Yeah. And the willful, even joyful acceptance of the mark of the beast that will come after the rapture of the church and the Antichrist is given free reign over the earth. All he must do is promise to fulfill all of the needs and desires for a good life. And the whole world will line up to get the jab. Hello! And take the mark and then wear it like a badge of pride. Oh, yeah. But I thank God. Amen. And we're going to be out of here, church, when that happens. Hold on, change, be ready. The present distress is a wake-up call right now. Yeah, true. Come on, I was preparing this lesson, getting ready before even what happened yesterday. Last night, God knows what we need. Yes. To the church that we must prepare for a spiritual warfare that has suddenly increased dramatically and becoming more intense than it ever had today. There is a new day where normal will never be again. But the times are changing rapidly. The whole world is in labor pains. Yes. And there is perpetually among the nations bringing the whole planet into alignment with the prophetic word yes. as the world prepares to accept the Antichrist. Yes. But I'm quiet. Yes. I won't be around to see it. Yes. Hello? Anybody going with me? Yeah. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. If the time, if the signs of times as ever were, and things are happening in such a rapid pace, how close, how close, church, can we be to the rapture of the church? Listen, church, these are my words. I'm not looking for this Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Amen. Huh? The world can look for the coming. They can talk about the coming of the Antichrist. But I'm talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that's going to take me out of God. He's the one I'm looking for. Amen. But if we are serious about being ready, for the rapture, then we must get serious about receiving, walking in, and being filled with the Holy Ghost so that we may be prepared for what's coming soon. And it's right here now. There's no more time for being a lukewarm, half-hearted, pleasure-seeking Christian. 
We have to take our eyes off of being better, more prosperous, happier, satisfied citizens of the earth and focus on better, more obedient, and purified citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. Never forget that everything on the, of this earth will be consumed by the purifying fire of God in the end. Nothing that so many, nothing that so many focus their whole lives on having and doing will survive the flames. It will all be lost. The only thing that will count in the end is that which we have committed to Christ and the treasures that we have stored up in heaven. Listen to me, your very thoughts, your very intents, your works and dreams will all face the purifying fire. Amen. And only that which has eternal value in the kingdom of God will survive Amen. to gain you a reward in eternity. Amen. Everything that we save for. But don't take me the wrong way. God wants us to be blessed. Huh? He does. He wants us to be blessed. But that's not my God. Come on, come on. Those are material things. God has blessed me. God has blessed Sister Angela abundantly over. We may not have much, but we're blessed. Amen. Come on. Last few days, you know, I told somebody and they asked me, what are you doing having a garage sale? I said, I'm blood for punishment. At a garage sale the last two days, God blessed us. He did. Still got more. <laughs> so we'll do it next week. A couple days. Try to get rid of it. And yes, I have said it, and yes, I'm standing on it. No more! <laughs> if it ain't big and it ain't worth something, you want to give it to me, you can give it to me, I'm going to put it in a marketplace and sell it. If it's beside the road and it's big enough and I know that I can make money off it, I'll pick it up and I'll sell it. Yeah. But I don't want your triplets, your little uh, glass things and stuff like that. I don't want it. I'm going to haul a bunch of that away. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I sold about four things uh, between uh, Friday and Saturday, maybe five things. I picked up off the road. Made money off of it. Poor man's, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, junk is a, a rich man's junk is a poor man's treasure? Hello? If I can, if I see it, I can make some money off of it and give it away, I'll pick it up. But don't offer anything to me. I love you. Don't want it. I'm done. I even told Sister Angela, I said, you know what, I think I'll even sell the tables. She goes, no, we're not selling the tables. We'll keep those, but we can use those. Maybe somebody needs them to use one time, but we can let them have it, to use it. I don't want to do it no more. I got more important things to do. Yeah, that is getting the word of God and see what thus saith the Lord has for us. Amen, as your pastor, to preach the word of God. Never forget that everything will be consumed. Everything that we own will be consumed. While we are preparing for the coming of the Lord to catch His bride away, we must also be ready to release the power of faith and let the fire of the Holy Ghost flow through us like that river of living water. It's a time for the river to flow. Yeah. It's a time for the fire to burn. It's time for the tongues of the Holy Ghost to come forth out of the mouth and the heart and the spirit of every Christian because Christ is empowering His church to conquer the great works of the devil, to lead many souls to Christ, and to be the forerunners of the second coming. The tongues may speak into the hearts of men where we cannot, and the Holy Ghost can 
make each man hear what he is saying. Well, it to us it may have an uncertain sound, yet we know it's of God. Just as John the Baptist, don't you going to be an hour and a half, no. I'm halfway through it. John, just as John the Baptist was the forerunner to Christ over 2,000 years ago, so now is the Holy Ghost filled church called to be the forerunner of Christ today. Amen. You and I have been called to be the forerunner. The fire of God must flow in us. Causing us to bring that light of the gospel, the light of Christ to the darkness around us. The fire of God in us, by the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, burning and shining forth, will draw lost souls to Jesus, like a bug to a light in the darkness of night. Huh? When you get that light of the Holy Ghost shining in us, come on. We will be like that little bug light or that little light you turn on in, outside in the dark. What draws to it? Bugs. Huh? Same way it should be of us, not drawing bugs, but souls. Amen. Come on, church. They will be transformed, saved, purified, and born again into a new creation in Christ through the purified fire of the Spirit. They come to Christ seeking and they leave rejoicing. Set free from sin and death. And they will go out as flames of fire. Set on fire by the Holy Ghost. And they will begin to draw others. Come on. Into. Lord I pray that the purifying fire of the Holy Ghost does its work in me. Let that purifying fire sweep through victory in the cross ministries. Touching and cleansing everyone, everything, everyone here. Let the fire flow free, freely in us. Now don't be filled with fear when purifying comes. It doesn't always feel so good while it's burning, but it surely is wonderful when, it, when its work is done. Huh? The purifying means the heat is applied. The pressure is coming. That impurities are going to rise. Rise. Come on, church. They're going to rise up to the surface that must be skimmed off. That you must be poured out like a mold, molten gold into the image that God has already designed for you to become. You must, must be set aside to be a vessel that is ready for use in the Lord's house to do a work for Him. The fire of the Holy Ghost will shine the light of truth upon everything in your life. Perhaps it will bring the revelation and conviction for secret sin. Brother Tom Wells sings that song, My Hidden Things, I think that's how it goes. Maybe the fire of the Holy Ghost will call for casting off some of those things of the world that you are holding on so tightly. The fire will lead us into making a greater dedication and a greater commitment to the work that is set. Come on, church. Oh, thank you. Before us. The purifying fire must force us to make greater steps of faith. To step out and obey God in ways that you've never done before. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The refining fire of the Holy Ghost will bring the testing of your faith according to 1 Peter 1.17. He says that the trials of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The removing of our impurities by the Holy Ghost fire is to bring us to a place that we reflect Christ in our lives. That when people look at our lives, our actions, our words, they don't see us, but they see Him. Huh? Like Brother Bob gave a testimony long ago that made it works with Him. 
So can I talk to you? Talking back here, he says, I've heard through the grapevine that you're a prayed man. Come on, folks. Are we allowing them to let people see our light? Are they seeing us pray at the dinner table? I took my lovely wife out Friday night to eat. I said, we're tired. I said, let's go worry. But after 5.30, I said, let's just go get some light to eat. We went to the restaurant. We sat down. They took our order. And then as she took her order, she left. I said, let's pray. Right there out in front of everybody, we prayed. And I could hear the lady not disturbing us, but sitting down in the water quietly and left. I didn't stop because the water showed up. Come on, church. We gave God the praise. We gave God the glory. Are we letting our light shine? Are we allowing that purified Holy Ghost rise up in us? People know who we are. Or are we like what the Word says there may be a great falling away? Huh? <coughs> we want to be Jesus. If we want to be Jesus to the world, for that to be happen, we need to be like gold refined by fire. And to be refined, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost in us. The time has come that we all need to seek for the filling baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. We can't just be satisfied with, with plain Christians. We can't be satisfied with human effort alone. We need Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost in us, empowering us to do the work for God. The spirit of revival is in our midst. Have you noticed that God is bringing new faces into our midst? Some of them are not here today, but they were. They're coming. And it may only be a few right now, but the floodgates are about to open. And people are going to come seeking for answers. And we will give them Jesus. Who is the answer? We need to be full of the Holy Ghost to teach them, lead them, and disciple them. We don't need man's programs, our methods of entertaining, or our ideals on how to build a church. We need the anointing. Purified fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. God will build His church. And he wants us to, us as builders, working with him. In the book of Malachi, the word of God proclaims that there is coming a messenger from God to prepare Israel for the coming of Jesus as their Messiah. Yes. As I read this, I was convinced that this same message is being sent to the church so that we can prepare the ways of the hearts of men for the rapture of the second coming through the, Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Malachi chapter 3, 1 through 3 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come in his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who shall abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he, he is like a refiner's fire, and like a full soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they be offered to God, and offering into righteousness. The sons of Levi, the tribe from which the priesthood that served in the temple, represent the church in our day. For we are all called to be priests. Amen? Amen. First Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
Church, the fire of the Holy Ghost comes to us as a refiner. Pure, purging us and making us pure as gold and silver so that we may offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God as we lead many to Christ. Get ready to be peculiar. Some of you are already there. I remember I've told this story many different times, but let me tell you again. I'll make it brief. Worked in a glass factory, cut out windshields in a cutting machine. They come up to me and I lined up with that. If you notice on your windshield, there's a, a, a dark screen that goes around it, a stencil on there. I lined that piece of glass up, hit a button, then paint it, put it on there and go out. That one come up. One day I was just standing there just to say it away. And these two uh, uh, ladies that were load, unloading the glass and putting it on to my, on my place and setting it up to me, just staring at me. And I looked at them and I said, something wrong? No, we're just watching you. Watching me do what? You act crazy in there. I said, no, I'm being peculiar. Huh? I'm doing what the Word says. Yes. Come on. You be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. We need to let them know, church. Get ready to be a priest of the royal family of God and tell others about Jesus. Let the fire burn in you. Amen? Amen. I have only one passage of Scripture to read. It's found in Acts chapter 19. Were we talking about this Thursday night? Are we 19 yet? No. We're getting there, are we? Acts 19, 1 through 3 says, And it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. And Acts chapter 19, 4 through 6 says, Then Paul said, John really baptized for the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. This is where many in the church are right now. They are believers. They are trying to be obedient to the Word of God that they know. They have repented of sin and, begin, and, and been born again. But just as it was that day in Ephesus, they hadn't gone far enough. There was much more of God to experience. Oh, come on. Unlike those disciples, most of us have heard of the Holy Ghost, but never really understood it or sought after it. Let me tell you that believing on Jesus is wonderful. Amen? Amen. Being born again is beyond great. But why stop there? Why not go all the way? Why not receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost yes. with the evidence of speaking in tongues? That's where the purifying process continues. Amen. That's where the power of the anointing comes. It's free to anyone who wants it. Yes. And if you are, have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, <coughs> and if you are not felt that fire in a long time, you need a refreshing. <coughs> the days of carrying are over. Yes. Oh. In these last days, God is bringing forth revivals, miracles, signs, and wonders quickly, for the time of His coming is near. Even at the door, and what God is doing is a quick work for the life and of the fire. 
I thought as I was just reading that, that God is preparing for revivals, miracles, signs, and wonders quickly. But the time of coming is near. And I don't know about you, we saw a miracle yesterday. If you saw what happened to our president, President Trump, that was a miracle from God. Come on. God was there. Yes. Amen. He knew that man was up on that roof. Yeah. I'm not going to get into everything that I've heard. I don't want to know. I ain't going to take that waste of the time on that. But just listen to the, the, weather, the news. They're going to be pointing fingers at everybody. Yeah. The, point, the finger they need to point at is a saint. <laughs> Demon spirits. Yes. Yeah. We need to praise, church, because we are in a battle, spiritual battle, right now in this country. The devil don't like it. He tried to take it out last night. Come on. That's not a of the devil. He's being used by that spirit. Oh, I like to say a lot of things. Uh, well, you've been watching since last night, you know. All I can say is we are living in the last days. And if you don't have, and I believe I don't cry, I've heard every one of us in here at one time or another speaking times. Maybe you need a refreshing. Huh? Maybe you need to go back to the to the cross. I can't give you any refreshing. Huh? I'm not going to stand up here like a preacher that we listened to here a few weeks ago that I'm never going to listen to again. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. I can't do nothing without his power and anointing. I can't save nobody. I can't heal nobody. This man said, I got. A whole bunch of people saved. No, you didn't. You can't save nobody. I can't save you. But I know one who can. Yeah. I can't give you the Holy Ghost. But I know one who can baptize you. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the only baptizer there is. Come on. You need to go back to him. I need to go back to him. So don't give me a refreshing of your power of your spirit. That when I see somebody, know somebody, or haven't seen somebody for a long time, that the Holy Ghost will give me the words to speak to them. Not my words, but your words, God. That's where the refining fire comes in place. It burns out, takes out that stuff, that those pleasures that we like. Oh, I enjoy doing things. But those are only for a season. Huh? I want God to move upon this church and upon your lives. That you'll give some of the greatest testimonies which God has done through you and used you to speak to people. But Bob gave a good example this morning. He sure that would be a couple weeks ago. I shared last week. People are watching us. Huh? I don't know who kicked me off the floor. Really don't care. But I spoke my piece. But I know one thing. Some people saw it before it got kicked off. And the person that kicked off of, they kicked it off. I'm gonna pray for them. They need Jesus. Are you watching? Open it. You need Jesus. Hello? I'm going to speak my, my peace. They should have never invited me. If they got trouble now. <laughs> I'm going to tell it like it is. But I know what it was. That scripture right there. Genesis 15 20. Or 50, 20. They didn't like it. I thought this was an influence, and that's the reason why. That's the reason why. It wasn't because 
You don't believe me? You can take it up with God. Do you hear God? No, it was the Word. It was the Word of God. They didn't like it. This is what I said. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God made it unto good, it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Yes. That's why I kicked it off. They didn't like the Word of God. But they didn't have no problem when I put the Chronicles 7 14 on the other form. And I told them that we need prayer back in the schools and we need prayer back in our homes. What happened tonight don't need to be happening. Come on. We need the refining fire. Church, listen to me. I love you. God has a remnant. Sister Angela read the book Swagger put on there this morning too. It's on there. Go, go look at it. We need the, the power of God back in, in our lives. Our God is awesome. He can not only move mountains, but He can move bullets. He protected. I believe God's got a great work. The judgment begins where? In the house of God. We need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for protection. Oh, there's going to be some changes, I bet. It's going to go on with the Secret Service and all that. I'm not going to get into detail. But we need to pray for this man. I believe, I'm going to stand around the world, I believe he's going to get voted back in. Yeah. I do. I believe he's going to get voted back in. And the world don't like it. The devil don't like it. It'll be 100% God. Amen. It will be 100% God. I believe that. I believe that. But we got to pray for him until yeah. then. God will build a hedge about him yes. stronger than he ever has. Not only him, but his family. I pray for those lives that are still hanging on for their lives today. Innocent bystanders. Come on, folks. We don't know. You can you read it on Facebook all the time. You go, people going into Walmart or wherever just open fire. Protect yourselves. Protect your families. I am. And if I have to drag them into the house after I shoot them, I'll drag them in. Amen. Are you hearing me? We are living in that day. When I was growing up, you left your doors unlocked. You left the, 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 the main door open. The screen door open. When is open at night? You felt safe. Now you gotta lock your doors. So Brother Bob said maybe it's gonna get to a point where a certain time I'll have to lock the church door. Back door is always locked. If I see somebody coming, Brother Bob knows. Come on, church. We're living in that day. And we must be ready. We must be ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Because He's coming. And He's coming quickly. We need the refining fire of the Holy Ghost in our lives. We need to get ready. Because as the scripture read there, oh Lord, we are living in that day right now. He said, let no man let no man deceive you by any means. God said, for that day shall not come except there be a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed son of perdition. 
there is a falling away today because people are being deceived by Satan. Governor Huckleberry, Huckleberry, Huckleberry said very loudly. Huckleberry said it greatly last night. I believe he's a man of God. And it was uh, nice to hear even uh, Tim Scott said that yesterday they were having a prayer meeting before President Trump went out. Come on. That there is people, men and women, in the government that are praying. Praise God. Amen. Thank God there's somebody praying. But we as the church, the body of Christ, need to be praying too. And asking God to protect not only our own lives, our homes, our families, our church, the President Trump. We're living in that day, church. It's scary. Some of you those saints that's going on, if they didn't know what was going on, oh, they'd get angry in the grave. Never thought I would see it. Never even even me in my mind that we would see what's going on today. But we see it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What we need to pray for right now is the younger generation. The younger generation, the, even the teenagers, the ones in their early 20s and 30s. Come on, you listen to them. They, this young boy right here, JJ, Sister Sandy, your granddaughter back here, a little more downstairs. The little more Terry's at home. It's a time like that. Let it go, Mr. Schumacher, your granddaughter. That's what's going to look like. Huh? And if we go before, before the rapture takes place. I didn't worry about things like that when I was growing up because I was under the roof of mom and dad and I knew mom and dad was praying words. Thought of had that experience. And then they're gone. I remember the Lord spoke to my heart dearly. He said, you can't hang on to all this. Apron anymore. you got to pray yourself. Yeah. Come on. Mama's prayers, I still believe. Your mama's prayers, Brother Steve, are still lingering in the air. I believe Sister Kathy, Sister Shane, your mom and dad's prayers are still lingering in the air. I believe my mom's prayers are still lingering in the air. I still got two, one sister I know still lost. It's Jesus. You got you got children that's lost. Need Jesus. Whether they want to hear or not, it's your duty, my duty, to share the gospel to them. Oh, I know. I said I know, Mother and Dad. I've said that to my mom and dad many times. How many has? I have. But look where I'm at today. Come on. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You, you are the only one. I can pray with you about your children. And I do. And nobody can pray like you can. For your children, for your family. We need the refining fire back in our lives. Because there's a great fall away happening. Say your position, make your way back, please. Precious God, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, dear Lord, for each and every one under the sound of my voice here through Facebook. We thank you, dear God. And we ask you to continue to move, touch, and heal those on our prayer list. 
and save the lost. Save our children, dear God. We pray for the younger generation, dear Lord, that's coming up. Lord, because there's so much wickedness and worldly things out there worse than it was when we were growing up. And Lord, I pray, dear God, for President Trump. I thank you, dear Lord, for watching over and protecting him last night. We ask you to continue to protect him and his family. And Lord, we ask you to protect this church, these fine folks, their families. Because we are living in the last days. Lord, we need that Holy Ghost. We need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost in our lives. And I'm asking you, dear Lord, every, every person on the sound of my voice, here, there, or later, hears the, this message. That they all ask you, dear God, to give them a refreshing of that Holy Ghost power. Or they don't even have the Holy Ghost that they will ask to receive it. Receive Him, dear Lord, in their lives. We need that refining fire. And I thank you this morning for this church. I thank you again, dear Lord, for each and every one that comes here, watches by whatever device that watches. Everyone that supports this ministry. We thank you. We love you. As we sing this little chorus, I want to ask you this morning, if you want to make your way to the altar, you can, at your seat. But I want you to ask God, seriously ask God, to give you a refreshing. Even though you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning, I want you to ask God to give you a refreshing every day. Every day, when you get up, before you lay your heads down to rest, whatever it may be, Lord, refresh me with your power and your anointing. As we sing this song, will you do that this morning? Lord, I Thank you. 